happen to be doing a story about you know how bad it gets with stars. Um, I mean, did it get to the point where people were going through your trash and that sort of a thing to you know dig up dirt on you or? Yeah, apparently for a little while there, you know, uh, there was a time when people, whoever they were, were, were sort of fascinated with what what I might be throwing away, you know, into the garbage can. Um, it just happens. I don't know. I, I mean. I don't know, I mean, I've never really been fascinated with anyone's trash before, but some people, you know, what can you do? Do you know what they were looking for? Were looking for notes or things about your personality or something, or? Adult diapers, maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure what they were looking for. Um, but you know, what's real weird about that, the whole, the sort of, like the, the how the media thing gets sort of stretched out into this really absurd kind of surreal thing is <clears throat> you know like I said you know you're an actor and you're trying to do your job you know there's a ton of them out there who are trying to just kind of do their job get by and do the best they can make some money whatever and then suddenly you reach a certain level in your career and this kind of this sort of wheel starts spinning about uh, your past and your future and your present and who were you with last night and what club and this and like you know how many people you've you know quite possibly bumped uglies with or something you know it's like a, suddenly this thing starts happening it becomes no it doesn't become it's not about the work anymore it's not about films it's not about you know it becomes this kind of showboat thing <clears throat> this sort of society of ambulance chasers who uh, who are fascinated with, uh, you know, your personal life, or, uh, you know, like, what's inside your brain and, and things like that. And to me, that's, that's really f frightening because, I mean, there's only, I mean, there's only a couple of actors that I can think of that I, that, that I would be fascinated to find out what, what their thoughts are. Marlon Brando's one of them. I, I mean, he's obviously like an amazing—he's an amazing actor, and he's possibly the greatest. But what what fascinates me about Marlon Brando is uh, his brain and his thoughts, you know. But I mean, to be to become fascinated with the personal life, or the, or the thoughts and opinions of a person who pretends for a living, who lies for money, is beyond me. So what do you do then? How do you deal with all this stuff? And... Lay low. <laughs> Just kind of lay low. I don't, you know, I'm not a real uh, uh, function-oriented person. I, I don't, uh, I don't do well in, in, uh, at functions or, you know, like the the Hollywood party scene. I just kind of, uh, I don't uh, go there so much. I just kind of stay home you know, or wander a bit. Tell us about your favorite cigars, your fascination. Why is this something that is part of you? Well, you know what, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a smoker. It's not a popular thing to be in 1993, a smoker. But uh, I don't know, cigars somehow just, they seem, uh, it's a great, it's, it's, as soon as you light it, it's sort of somehow you instantly relax. It's just, I don't know what it is. Um, my favorite cigars, I can't say. There's so many great ones. I have, t you know, there's some real nice Cuban cigars. It's not, a, it's not a false, it's not like a, it's a real thing. You know, when people say, oh, Cuban cigars, the finest, you think, oh, yes, look, cigars, cigar, tobacco's tobacco. No, it's wrong. Cuban cigars are the stuff. Um, the favorite, maybe, you know, maybe uh, a Cohiba Lancero. It's kind of a thin, that was Castro's cigar. That's the, that was his favorite cigar before he quit. To people who don't smoke, what would you liken cigar smoking, that, that feeling to? Is it, is it like a fine wine or uh, how would you describe Yeah, maybe like, depending on the cigar you're smoking, would be uh, comparing it to maybe uh, a warm cognac, you know? Just something like that suddenly everything starts to just kind of calm down, and just sort of, sort of sink into the old lazy boy. How did you get into the cigars? Was, did somebody introduce you, or was it? Your... Because if someone walked up to me and handed me 
a rolled up pair of socks, I would probably smoke it. I'm, I'm one of the few and the proud smokers who really love smoking. I, if, I, if I could have another mouth grafted onto my face to smoke more, I would do it. I have lung power from, I, 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 the one gift I have in this world is I have incredibly strong lungs. Sometimes I smoke two, three cigarettes at a time. You can hear the American Cancer Society <laughs> phones ringing right now, and the publicists are going, get this Well, guy. you don't have to use it. I mean, it's just no, sort of there. Hey, you're being honest, you know? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, in, you know, I'm a big smoker. Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> oh, yeah, here they are.